Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a brand new video of Bleach Mobile 3D. Now, in today's episode, what I wanted to do is cover the new update that did come out earlier today, slash a little bit earlier, a couple, like, minutes ago, even. Um, and just kind of check it out, uh, and everything that it has to offer. Now, I am heading out sometime soon, so it will be a shorter video today. Uh, but let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Now, the primary thing during this update that is going to be probably the biggest thing, for a lot of people at least, is this. Uh, character redemption is now open, meaning any time that you end up doing pulls, you will get these exchange gems. Um, and you can use the exchange gems to get copies of the Holification Ichigo, which is Vestal Lord. We'll be checking out his moveset a little bit later inside the video as well. Um, but it does seem like it's going to cost a pretty penny to try and get it, because it does cost 20 of these per shard. You need 50 of them. And apparently, um, they did a thing where... For the update, they did it. They gave a bunch of stamina. They gave a bunch of these. But the biggest part about this is the fact that it says the number of historical recruitments will be given, are will be given the exchange gems as a, as a reward. For those who have done recruitment previously, the system will continue to or will issue the exchange gems according to number of scouts. So I get 178 off of this, meaning the entirety of my multis and stuff like that that I have done through the process of playing this game. Have given me 178, which should be like six shards, uh, or maybe a little bit more, like like maybe seven or eight. Uh, but I am gonna get all of these. I'm gonna go ahead and claim everything. Looking quite good, and it's gonna be quite nice for everything we want to do. Um, but what that does mean is it's going to be a minute before I actually get him for myself, and you can actually trade 100 of them to get his arrow as well. Granted, you just want a copy of him for the most part to start off. Uh, but I am going to exchange for him as much as I can, because he's going to be one of those characters. I don't see a clear time where this is going to end, and does say unlimited exchange. Uh, but I do want to try to get him as soon as possible, because I do love his character quite a bit. And God knows, the first time I rolled on BBS, I wanted him. That was like the main reason why I rolled in the first place. So I currently have 8 shards. I imagine there's going to be whales that have him already no matter what. I imagine you can look at the top people on the server and just be like, wow. That's a big strong. Um, but yeah, you know, that's how it ends up going. And I'm sure I'll get there at some point eventually. Uh, but that's going to be super awesome. Like, genuinely, I'm super excited to try and get him once the progression happens. And he's going to be an inevitability for a lot of people once you do enough pulls. So it's just a matter of getting there. Um, but the other main update they added to this game, for this one at least, is this the character trial. Uh, what, which, what is it, what it is, supposedly, is you get four choices per day of different shards you can grind. I think this is actually a new Chad art, by the way. I don't recognize this one at all from BBS. Uh, but we're gonna do the Aizen one right here. We're actually... Here, before we do that, um, I have leveled up my Aizen quite a bit, and I'm using him now in some of my main party as well. So what we'll do, I'm going to use all the stamina that I just ended up, uh, procuring from all of that. And I'm gonna get him up and upgraded. I'll be right back and I'll see you guys in one second. Okay, so I went ahead and swapped around my team. I upgraded Aizen to plus three. Um, we do have a couple of talent things I can use here to actually upgrade him. Now I have him mostly spec'd into being a good assist for me, but I mean, we'll, we'll give him these upgrades anyway because it's extra power regardless. Um, and then we'll hop into doing just a limited challenge with him. Check out his moveset anyway. Because I actually haven't done a showcase on the channel just yet of his actual whole set of things. But I really enjoy playing as him. Um, I feel like my ideal team has now kind of come together because of it. Uh, Aizen, Don Guy, and Nell are kind of my ideal, I guess. If I could, I would swap the Aizen for Ukiora. But that's just natural progression. Um, but we will do. We'll hop into this and we'll try and get some more shards of Aizen here as well, just off of it. Um, and I'm hoping that we can end up beating this. I don't actually know how hard they are. Well, let's do it. Hey there. So his first is a big zap. His second is a shield. His third is like a send forward attack. He awakens. I like the rose effect a lot on him, actually. And he goes into it. He has Kurohitsugi. He has his spins. He has his shoot still. And he just does pretty well. Honestly, I like his moveset a lot. I don't see myself playing as him all that often, but I like his assist especially. Also, 
I have come to realize over my process of playing, like, recently, roses are really fucking good against bosses. Because funnily enough, the way that the roses work is it sets the enemies to be set into a random pathing in different directions. But because of the way that AI works inside this game, Chaos Effect will just randomize how the enemy sees you. So they'll try and get to you and try and actually progress toward your location, but they'll walk in the wrong direction because of the chaos and walk in the wrong way. And they'll just be able to keep on attacking them while they do, and they won't actually try and lock onto you because they can't turn to your direction properly. It's great, they won't actually try and hit you at all. You can see here, he's like turning away and not actually caring about me. He's been great for trying to use against the, um, or they've been great against trying to use against the, the association trial stuff. Like the, the, the big Dawn guy boss fight, for example. Uh, he's been rough, but it's been great. Um, this actually isn't too bad. I expected a lot, I don't know, I expected a harder off of this. This is pretty balanced toward my general DPS and power right now. I'll take it. And we're done. There we go. You get two shards off of it, actually. Which means we'll be able to grind him out pretty easily, aside from just spending your soul stone currency off of it. I will take that. It actually does swap here after you do one. And Dawn Guy shards are available here. That's going to be so fucking good for free-to-play characters. Now, I don't know if this is only based on the characters that you have yourself. um, Because I've had all these characters that are here. I don't know if you can only get Don Guy if you already have him unlocked, but if people don't have Don Guy themselves and they see them inside here, you can get him pretty free to play friendly in that case. That's going to be great. That's super exciting. So you guys feel free to let me know about that because that is actually something I'm very curious about. Oh, that's that's great. I'm super happy. I'm definitely going to try to get these done guaranteed all five every day. Um, I don't know if I'll be, be refreshing it because I do need shards just generally off of everything. But we'll end up seeing. One of the biggest things I need right now would be like, I think I need three more shards of Soifon to actually get her unlocked and good to go. So I'd love to get her today. I would love that to have that be what we unlock. Um, other SSRs I am missing is like White Ichigo would be a pretty big one. Uh, Neliel, Young Version. Um, what else? What else have I ended up missing through my process of pulling? I think that's about it in terms of banners, aside from like maybe Momo. But I'm not really too concerned with getting Momo myself, honestly. Like the Valentine's weird Momo. Pop this off. His second is actually really good for popping off the Rose ability because it hits many times. It's like a circle around him. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, All in all, great teams. I'm super happy with this. I'm sad that this Aizen going to end up being the one I replace, but he will be a pretty good bond for future times anyway. Um, he does bond with the Urahara and the Gein, so I've been using them as my main stuff recently. It, it's, it's, it's definitely been bigger investments to try and get Urahara back to upgrade him. But yeah, two shards of him is going to be great for trying to upgrade him. I will absolutely take that. It is a very slow process, naturally. <gasps> no. Oh. I see. I understand. Own a character to challenge. So if you have the character unlocked fully already, you are able to grind up more shards of them off of this. But the random characters you don't have yet will appear on rotation alongside it. So New Year's Rukia is going to be a tease for me going forward. That is unfortunate. Um, but great to know. Honestly, in terms of the game mode then, it's still pretty... It's going to be hard to be teased every day by, like, the Don Guy Ichigo for some people. But genuinely, that's going to be fantastic. I'm going to try to get uh, Don Guy up to rank. I think it's... I think it might be 12, honestly, to get the, li the last bond increase. I thought it was 10, but I think I saw 12 earlier. Uh, but I need to get there. That's my main goal for him right now. I also need to get Aizen up to rank 7. The issue with that is I don't think that he bonds with the new Ukiora I'm looking for, so I don't know if I'll end up caring that much about getting him up now. Um, but we'll see. Definitely. I want to try to keep my Universal Shards as much as I can for later on, because I'll need it quite a bit for trying to get more upgrades in the future. Or I'm just, like, stagnating for now until I get the new units, honestly. Uh, I'm just going to avoid that. Ow, 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 Kate. That hurts a wee bit. Thank you. Stop that. Ow. 
You know, Don Guy, we're just fighting in this fucking weird ass park. I don't understand how you entered and trained here, but I understand that you tried your best. I'm gonna defeat you regardless, but I mean, you've surpassed Soul Reapers. That's certainly the case. Here, go away. Get taken away. I also think that Aizen might just automatically apply chaos to his abilities already. I don't, I haven't actually read up on his abilities myself just yet, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he sleeps as well, which is quite nice. Okay, and it doesn't always give you two shards. It can give you downwards to one, and I imagine zero. Oh. Oh, the Nell's a tease. I'm curious about something though. Uh, Bond, Gallery, SSR. What's new? Okay, yeah. So the next batch actually has been added to the game with that as well then. So beyond the actual new Bonkai Toshiro that will be dropped next, um, we'll be getting a couple of new characters, including the version 2 Ukiora, New Year's uh, Glorious, oh my god, New Year's Byakuya, uh, we had the Ichigo already added as well, and a new version 2 Grimjow. Uh, we actually will be checking out those movesets a little bit later on inside the episode, I suppose, but this Ukiora is the one I want, I want the most. This is the one I was trying to gun for. You can actually see, if you look in the details here, the bonds are definitely a pretty penny to invest in. Other Ukiora, Arankar Aizen, uh, Dongai Ichigo, I don't care about those ones. Uh, the the other Espada isn't too bad with the Grimjow, and the Nell I already have, so that's not too bad. But he does go into Segunda Tapa, which is super cool. And we'll be checking that out a little bit later when we do get into that. Um, but let's finish this off before I actually forget for the day. And I guess we'll fight Tosen this time. I kind of want to refresh it with the gold, honestly. Do it! Uh, Toshiro, I would actually appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, I will absolutely take it. I like this this uh, area far better. Actually, Toshiro, come over here. Come over here. I want to try to look at the area. Look at that. It's like fully... It's not fully modeled. Naturally, the Gote 13 is like cut off pretty handedly. But the area around is pretty well modeled. That's a pretty nice background. I don't know about that giant patch of grass that's just sitting around. Huh. You know, I don't take a lot of times like this to try and look at the actual areas around the general game. A lot of really cool textures, though. I don't actually know what the maps are. Like, I know generally there's there's the Gote 13, there's the Karakura Town, there is the Don Guy, there's the desert, there's the Zanpakuto Battlefield where Ichigo learned his like Bonkai shenanigans. I don't remember quite what else. There's the Research and Development Lab office as well. Uh, there is the Hueco Mundo. I don't know if there's a top of Hueco Mundo slash Lost Noches yet. There is a Lost Noches map though. Um, they have a lot of really interesting things actually. Now I'm thinking about it. There's a lot of variety in here. BBS has like, I want to say seven or eight presets they use that they have tile sets of. Um, they try to change it around as they went through the story more and more. So I think. Actually, I thought like seven or eight because there was a few that are kind of key. Now that I'm remembering it, there's a couple of other ones that have like different reflective floors. There's different ones that are like only for inheritance or for the full bring arc. So I guess there is far more off of that. I'd be curious what else they wanted to add to this game in the future then. I like maps a lot. I like like new details like that. I do think that like new textures and new setups for areas is really nice. That's kind of my... If you could give me an aesthetic, like, I don't know. I, I recently saw a screenshot of uh, Sekiro's later areas in the Divine Realm. I don't know anything about it. I just know about the actual Divine Realm itself. Give me an area like that where there's like petals everywhere, like falling from the sky, or, like the rose effect that I currently have, and I would be down for it. I would chill inside that area forever. I'd be super down for it. However, our final enemy is going to be Grimjow, and we are fighting him inside the Broken Las Noches area. Is this the place where, like, Dordoni fought? Because that'd be interesting. Looks like it, at least. Like, Dordoni, um, not Loopy. What's the, what's the name of the other one? Uh, the one with the whips that fought Uryu? Uh, Dordoni was the, the, the wind one. There was the whip one that had, like, the snail whip. 
Uh, there was Gotten Bane, which was the one that fought uh, Chad himself. I, I don't remember the name, honestly. It escapes me. But it, it, the, the girl might have been here, honestly. Reggie, I think that there was a little bit more yellow to it, and there was also, like, some sort of Reishi indicator somewhere, like Zele Schneider's all over the floor. So, hmm. Yo, Grimmy Poo. Die. I like the fact that I'm, like, negating his skills, though. That's always nice. It's always an enjoyable time. And, ow, ow, stop it. Honestly, I don't know if I'm feeling the shields. It's not quite working for me too well. It doesn't last long enough. There's only like a split second, and if you end up missing it, it's just fucking done. Like, go. That still hit me. All right, I need to try and find my timing on that, I think. Eventually, someday I'll dream. Here, I'm just gonna awaken. Go, pop it off. Die super hard. He just keeps on going. This is the biggest of your size. Go away. Bop it. All right. I'm going to try to tank through this with the shields. Do it. And now. Nope. That didn't do anything. Damn it. I don't know the timing on it. Honestly, it's kind of difficult. I imagine someone that gets really good at like Solar Group Brawl could get good at it, but really not clicking in for me. But done. And that's not too terribly bad at all. I also need the shards of Grim Jow anyway. I think I got him to rank seven recently, but I definitely want to try to get him further. So I will take it. Absolutely. That's some great rewards off of that new game mode. And it's also at the front of your whole set of things to do. Also goes away to the bottom afterwards. Um, so you definitely try and remember it for each day as you go. Good stuff. Honestly, I'm super happy with that. Uh, but for the rest of this episode, what we'll be doing is checking out the new ca characters and kind of talking about that, because I was actually very curious. Um, I guess we'll start from full hollow and then just kind of go down the line and see how things go. Let's hop into a trial. Ugh. I'm excited. I haven't actually seen the movesets at all for these characters. Alrighty. So, our first is... Teleport and explode, which actually is pretty spot on the Soul Resurrection ability. Uh, second is the jump and dash around in circles, which actually is pretty similar as well. Big uh, head Sero makes a lot of sense. So he has double traversal abilities as well. And like, that's a pretty big AoE on a second as well. And it takes a couple of seconds to proc off. He's going to be fun. He's going to be a real fun character to play inside Brawl, especially. His normals are pretty basic. All in all, like, very general area. Yeah, no. This covers some pretty big areas. It's gonna be fun. His awakening is... He screams the loudest he can. His first turns into an even bigger area. His second turns into the spikes, which actually is his second similar to BBS. His third is still the Saro, but it becomes slightly bigger. Honestly, this moveset seems like it's gonna be super fun to play with. I'm going to really enjoy playing this inside Super Brawl. He is so good at, like, going through it, and he does have a bunch of attack increases as well. Interesting. He also has a shield as well, like, similar to how Nell has. He also has an invincible, which is cannot be targeted and is immune to repel, knock up, and stun. He can't get pregnant. Great stuff. My kind of couple. God damn it. Um, 15%. Not too bad. So what procs the invincibility? So that's the crit increase off of his first. So that's not too bad. His second is the shield. That would make a lot of sense. His third would be the inv invincibility for two seconds and the attack increase. So all in all, his kit is going to be incredible for trying to control fields. And just as he pops more and more and gets faster, he's going to get stronger and stronger just as it goes. It's going to be great. Oh, oh, I'm super excited to get him. Okay. Hopefully I'll be able to get him at some point in the future. Hopefully soon. Um, he, I only have eight shards, so I definitely need to try and invest a lot. But man, can dream. And I guess we'll go into Grim Jow next, because he actually was one of the characters I was curious about. Um, I am noticing right now that not one of these characters is actually a skill typing, which is the sword. Uh, which actually would be what I wanted to replace the sword I have in my team in my Aizen. 
So that's a bit of a rougher time, I think. That's... I don't know about that. Also, Ichigo appears to be a neutral typing as well. Interesting. Okay, let's hop into trial, though. Alrighty, so I imagine his set's gonna be pretty similar to the Awakened Grim Jow from before. But his first is... Holy fuck! That's huge! Oh, I love that. Okay, let me see that again. So his first is a jump in, huge area of effect, and then jump out again. His second is a stab, 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 and then stab, stab, stab. Not too crazy, but it's kind of fun. His third is the Degrashions. He goes at it. Degrashions. That's... I'm... Did I just combine Degrassi and his... That's okay. It's, it's Degrashions. It's okay. We'll just put Drake in a wheelchair. It'll work out. Um, but yeah, I actually, I don't mind it. His first seemed like the strongest part of his kit. If, if I was playing Story Reaper Brawl and I saw a Grimjaw running towards me that suddenly jumped and turned into a giant ball of blue flame, I would be horrified. It seemed like a very intimidating thing, if anything. It's like a fucking peacock. The second, I don't really know too much about it. It's kind of meh. And it increases your dodge, but I don't know about that. His first doesn't actually have any effects on it as well. So, he doesn't seem to proc anything too crazy on it. His third gives him an immunity for three seconds to stun, trap, slow, and other control effects, and also increases his own attack, which isn't too bad. Um, so his third's gonna be the main part of his kit you want to pop off first. However, his awakening is... He just spins. His first turns into a tornado. He's even worse than before, honestly. His second has a shoot forward. And his third is just as much as it was before. It does seem that his first does give him um, sleep, though. Like, I, it only seemed to proc up for like a second, but the enemy was inflicted by sleep for a moment. So if I actually hold this, can I see the ability that it does? No, I can't. I'd have to check it inside the manual thing. Um, it doesn't seem like he's too crazy, though. I have to read up on his abilities here outside of this, because I imagine he's more of a debuffer than... He doesn't actually increase his own abilities by that much. So, skills. Uh, Multi-attack, rec recover 10% of the damage dealt, and has a chance to put enemies to sleep. He has lifesteal, and he has a chance to sleep, then. That's what he's mainly focused on. That makes a hell of a lot more sense than I was thinking. Um, his second would be... Life steal 10% and a chance to weaken the enemy, which I imagine is a decrease to the defenses. I actually don't know what weaken means inside this. Uh, but not too bad. When he is awakened, he gets a 20% life steal and a high chance to sleep. And high chance to weaken the enemy and no life steal on his second then. Um, not too bad though, honestly. I don't mind it too much. And he does have a, an assist to help him put enemies to sleep as well. Uh, he's going to be more like a saboteur unit to replace... Honestly, to replace Aizen, um, which is kind of interesting. I feel like he is going to be a pretty good force on a team. Um, I don't know about his entire moveset, because I'm not actually a huge fan of his effects post-awakening and stuff. But good stuff all in all. I'm actually curious about the details for this Ichigo as well. Crit and stun. Makes sense. Crit, uh, trap and gain a shield. Makes sense. Uh, crit and stun. And trap and shield. So... He buffs himself quite a bit and also traps the enemies, which is quite nice, which I believe is an anti-skill ability. Like, anti-dashing around and getting away. Um, but next up, we will be hopping into the New Year's Byakuya. I've actually heard really, really good things about him, weirdly enough. Um, I didn't expect much out of it, and I'm curious about what he has before we actually hop into it here. Uh, so his first is an AoE, which has a chance to stun. His second is a Chaos to the Enemies, has a low chance to disable a Transform skill, which would be the Awakening. Um, which is actually pretty solid for his second. Uh, his first would be, when he's awakened, a Stun, and his second would be a Disability as well. Uh, disability. That's not how you call that. A Disable as well of their abilities. So, I'm curious why he was hyped up so much now. Because his moveset sounds like it's pretty boring, but what is his areas of effect like? He has a distance from a from further away, so he is more of an AoE. His normals are also AoE focused, so he is kind of similar to what you would call the Toshiro. His second is a shootout as well. I guess he is just kind of a more controlly unit as well. 
Having him with roses will be really good for trying to proc even more chaos on the enemies as well. It also seems to have quite a bit of hits done. His third is just his Bonkai. That makes a lot of sense. I actually really like this moveset. It has a lot of impact to it, if that makes sense. Like, it has a lot of control around it. His awakening is... Big Bonkai with Confetti. His first is still the same it was, but it becomes a bigger area. His second is bigger area as well and lasts for longer. And his third is just an attack around as well. He also gains a shield off of it. So, pretty basic moveset all in all. But the areas of effects and the actual chaos and stuff is going to be really good for trying to control bosses and brawl, I feel. I feel like inside Brawl, he's going to be one of the scariest forces because of that stun, the trapping. You can put the chaos on him with the roses, and also just constant attacks. Because look at this, he's just not stopping with this at all. Just keeps on going. That This is going to be super overwhelming, 100%. That's going to be super fun to try and use if you end up getting him. I wonder when his banner is going to end up dropping. I think it's after Ukiara, unfortunately, but I don't mind it. Uh, he does bond with the New Year's Rukia for the the armor increase. So I'm curious what his actual attack increases would be. Like if I go ahead and check his details here. Um, his attack would be Yamamoto, Shinsui, uh, the Toshiro, and Mayuri. Honestly, pretty easy bonds all in all. I have three of those already. Interesting. He's going to be a really good unit going forward. Super easy to collect as well. And he's probably going to be dropped inside one of those events similar to how New Year's Rukia was. So he's going to be pretty easy to access as well. I'm in. I'm in. 100%. I am into that Byakuya. Decided. Easy enough. Um, And finally, let's go ahead and check out the probably most hyped character for me at least. The Ukiora here, which does go into Segunde Atapa. So his first strong attack would be... Interrupted enemy, which I imagine would be the knock up in the air. Um, the second would be a chance to stun. Makes sense. Wait, actually, what are the names of the attacks? Moon Lance and Moonlit Array. Versus Thunder Lance, which has a chance to interrupt. And Moon Whirlpool, which has a high chance to stun. Let's go check this out, shall we? Um, Actually, what is his assist? It's a high chance to stun as well. I actually really want that, because that would be one of the things I would want to use alongside my Don Guy and stuff. However, look at this shit. Here, how do I zoom in again? Was it like this? Here. So I think it's hold this and I can. Oh dear. If I go like that, I can zoom in on the model itself. He looks rad. Look at him! He's so fucking cool! Oh, I. Oh, 2004 screaming. Um, so he seems to have the same thing that the other Ukiora had, where he has the charges on his first and second. His first is a distance attack, which does it jump to the enemies? Nope, just stay in AoE, and just stay further away attack. His second is a pursuit, and dash in, and stab around for a pretty big stun. Um, and pretty decent cooldowns as well. Uh, his third is Big Sarah, makes a lot of sense. He's going to be able to control this quite a bit, like alongside all of these. I like that. And his normals are actually an a, like a distance attack, and he zooms into the enemies after. You, He's going to be so hard to control inside uh, inner selections. He's going to be super fun. Okay. His awakening, obviously. He awakens into the big cool thing. And there he goes. He becomes the Segunda Atapa, which looks absolutely rad. He's also floating. Uh, his first is... Similar to the first of the Mind Ukiara, his second becomes an AoE that stays around for a while in a Vortex. His third is still the Sero, but still fantastic. Oh, I'm a huge fan of this. I want to see his Awakening again, unfortunately, so we do have to attack for quite a bit. Um, but I'm super into it. I'm super down for it. I definitely want to try to grab him when he comes around. Um, oh, man. He's going to be so fun to play as. He's exactly what I try and look for inside games like this. And... Awaken! My master. Wow. It's so long, dude. Okay. So, the first is going to be great for clearing enemies and trying to group them up. 
The second being a Vortex is going to be great. There's not many Vortexes inside this game to actually control enemies with. Like, the Byakuya even, his Vortex for a second wasn't that long. This actually controls the enemies and holds them where you want them to be. He's going to be crazy good. I love it. I'm super excited. And I'm sad I don't actually get to get his Unawakened form at all. But I'm down for it. I, I am I am, I'm sold. 100% fucking sold. And this is going to be a fantastic set of updates. The issue is, because all these units are all relevant, the wallet's going to hurt. Well, it's definitely going to hurt a little bit. Um, I believe... I, I don't have exact confirmations for the exchanges for each of these different characters. Um, the only thing I can confirm to you is for the Ukiora's exchange, when you en are ending up pulling for him, it's 160 for him uh, to get him like semi-guaranteed. And then for the exchanges, you can exchange for the White Ichigo and the Adult Nell, I believe. So if you're ending up collecting a lot of the... Collecting bonds for Don Guy, for example, if you're collecting uh, just Nell for the sake of having Espadas, his banners can be perfect for that as well. So it's definitely perfect for me as well when I go into it. Um, however, that is going to be it for today's episode, all in all. It's been a great time. Uh, definitely super excited to see what they end up adding next to this. And the new update, like new content, it, it's still coming. And that is very different from other games I've been playing recently. Usually things just fucking stagnate after a month or two. But it's just keeping up, and I'm super happy with that. Um, so it's it's been great. Either way, for right now, I'll talk to you guys later. See you later. I'll see you when Ukiora drops in a couple of days, I suppose. Bye, everybody.